we will first discuss conversion of flying wedge projection into Fisher projection. Consider this flying wedge projection of a molecule with one chiral center. The three-dimensional ball and stick model of this molecule will be something like this. If we hold the molecule by this green sphere and rotate in this direction, we get this, where red and blue sphere project out, towards the observer. Green and yellow sphere project away from the observer. The same operation can be executed on this flying wedge projection, which gives this bow tie representation, with red and blue on wedges and green and yellow on dashes. Notice the bow tie is the two-dimensional representation of this rotated ball and stick model. Now in order to write the Fisher projection, we make a cross and put the sphere as they are in bow tie projection. Consider this flying wedge projection to convert into Fisher projection, we will rotate this by holding top green hydrogen so that bromine and fluorine comes out of the plane and hydrogen and chlorine goes into the plane. This gives us bow tie representation like this. Another way to write bow tie representation is to imagine you standing in between wedge and dash. You see fluorine on right and bromine on left, both coming towards you. Put these on right and left wedges on bow tie. You see hydrogen pointing up and chlorine pointing down, both away from you. Put these on up and down dashes on bow tie. This bow tie is easily converted to Fisher projection by replacing wedge and dashes with cross. Similarly consider this flying wedge projection. To convert into Fisher projection, stand in between the wedge and dash so that you see through the chiral carbon. You see bromine on right and hydrogen on left, both coming out towards you. Put these on right and left wedges of the bow tie. You see fluorine pointing up and methyl down, both going away from you. Put these on vertical top and bottom dashes of bow tie. Now make a cross and put the groups as they are on bow tie. This gives Fisher projection. Consider another flying wedge projection. To convert this into Fisher projection, stand in between wedge and dash and look through chiral carbon. You see OH on right and H on left, coming towards you, put them as such, on right and left wedges of bow tie. The methyl and ethyl pointing down and up, away from you, are put on vertical bottom and top dash of the bow tie. The same is reproduced on a cross to give Fisher projection. Consider this flying wedge projection of a molecule having two chiral centers, which means both carbons are bonded to four different groups. Carefully notice that none of the bond on one carbon eclipse on any bond of other carbon. Therefore this flying wedge projection is staggered or anti. The simple way to confirm this is to check the orientation of groups in the plane of paper, here the blue and red methyl, they are pointing in opposite direction, so this is anti. As we know, Fisher projection is eclipsed, therefore, before converting, this staggered flying wedge projection must be rotated to make it eclipsed. This is done by keeping the front blue carbon stationary and rotating the back red carbon by 180 degrees. The blue methyl in plane of paper now eclipses with red methyl. The OH on blue wedge eclipses with H on red wedge. The blue H on dash eclipses with red bromine on dash. Thus this flying wedge is now eclipsed or sin. Now, to convert into Fisher projection, position yourself a little above the chiral carbons in the plane of paper in between wedge and dash, just like we did in case of molecule having only one chiral carbon. We will draw the double bow tie for two chiral carbon. 
you see two chiral carbons in the plane of paper. On the front carbon, you see blue OH on right and H on left, both coming out towards you. On the bottom chiral carbon, put these on right and left wedge of bow tie. On the second chiral carbon, red H and bromine appear coming out and are therefore put on the right and left wedges of top second bow tie. The blue and red methyl on front and rear carbon appear going away from observer and is put on the bottom and top dash of bow tie. This makes a double bow tie structure. This double bow tie is reproduced on the double cross without any change. This makes the Fisher projection. Now that you have understood the procedure, you can directly write the Fisher projection of a flying wedge projection. Recall that Fisher projection depicts eclipsed conformation. To convert this staggered flying wedge projection directly into Fisher projection, look at the molecule from here. You see blue methyl pointing down. OH on your right and H on your left. We write these as such on lower chiral carbon. On the second chiral carbon which is depicted in red here, you see red bromine on your right, H on your left. But since Fischer projection is eclipsed, you exchange the position of these two groups and write bromine on left and H on right. The methyl is then put on vertical top. Notice that OH and bromine are on same side in flying wedge projection but they end up on opposite sides on Fischer projection. Same is the case with two hydrogens. This is because the carbon-carbon bond in staggered flying wedge projection has to be rotated by 180 degrees so as to get eclipsed conformation before converting into Fischer projection. Consider this flying wedge projection. Notice that blue and red methyl point in opposite directions, which means this is staggered projection. To convert it directly into Fischer projection, without doing the tedious rotation of rear carbon, you look at the molecule from this side, positioning yourself in between wedge and dash, slightly above the chiral carbons. Now you make a double cross for two chiral carbons. You see the blue and red methyl in the plane of paper. Accordingly put these on the bottom and top of the vertical line of Fischer projection. You see the NH2 and chlorine on your right and left. Accordingly writ these on right and left of the bottom horizontal line. On the second chiral carbon, you see OH on right and bromine on left, but the flying wedge is staggered and the rear carbon needs to be rotated to make it eclipsed before conversion. Therefore without doing this rotation, you directly exchange the position of groups on second chiral carbon. That is, you write OH on left and bromine on right. This gives you Fischer projection. Remember the Fischer projection has to be imagined like this double bow tie structure. Notice that the groups on the same side in staggered flying wedge projection end up on opposite side in Fischer projection. Consider this flying wedge projection. The rear carbon has chlorine on dash, therefore H must be on wedge. On the front carbon, bromine is on wedge which means H must be on dash. To convert into Fischer projection directly, position yourself in between wedge and dash above chiral carbons. For Fischer projection, draw a double cross. Put methyl and ethyl on the bottom and top of vertical line. On the front carbon you see bromine on right and hydrogen on left. Add these accordingly on horizontal line. On the rear carbon, you see hydrogen on right and chlorine on left. Add these on horizontal line but reverse direction, which is hydrogen on left and chlorine on right. This gives correct Fischer projection.
This flying wedge projection is staggered. Notice that the groups on the same side in staggered flying wedge projection end up on opposite sides in fissure projection. Now let us discuss conversion of fissure projection into flying wedge representation. Consider this fissure projection of a molecule having two chiral centers. Remember that fissure projection is eclipsed conformation. Before converting into flying wedge representation, convert it into double bow tie projection. Look at this bow tie from this side. You see bromine and hydrogen are coming towards you, so put these on solid wedges. Hydrogen and chlorine going away from you are added on dashes. The two methyl groups appear going down. These are written in the plane of paper, both pointing down. This gives us eclipsed flying wedge representation. To convert into staggered conformation, one carbon is kept stationary and another carbon is moved by 180 degrees. For example, if this red carbon is rotated, the red methyl now points up, hydrogen on wedge moves away from you, to end up on dash. Chlorine on dash now moves onto wedge after 180 degrees rotation. This gives staggered flying wedge representation. Let us convert this fissure projection directly into flying wedge. Remember to see this as bow tie projection. Look at the molecule from this right side. You see methyl on this left blue carbon going down. We put it in the plane of paper pointing down. Bromine coming towards you is put on solid wedge. Hydrogen going away from you is put on dash. On this red carbon, methyl is pointing down, but we put it on top in the plane of paper. Hydrogen is coming out, but we put it on dash. Chlorine is going away, but we put it on solid wedge. We have changed the orientation of groups on this red carbon because we need flying wedge in staggered conformation. Likewise this fissure projection can be directly converted to flying wedge by using our trick. See this fissure projection as bow tie representation. And look at this from right side. On this blue left carbon, methyl goes down. Bromine comes towards you and is put on solid wedge. Hydroxyl goes away from you and is put on dash. Remember fissure projection is eclipsed conformation, therefore on this red carbon, chlorine comes towards you but is put on dash. Hydrogen going away from you is put on solid wedge. Aldehyde group going down is put on top in the plane of paper. This gives us staggered flying wedge projection. In nutshell, one must remember that, when converting a fissure projection into staggered flying wedge representation, the groups on the same side in fissure projection end up on opposite sides in flying wedge projection. Same applies when converting a flying wedge into fissure projection. The groups on same side in staggered flying wedge projection end up on opposite sides in fissure projection.